Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you a bracelet. Actually, we're probably going to do a few bracelets. Um, I'm using this four and a half millimeter um, leather cord that I got from Exotica Leather. And I just wanted to do a very simple bracelet to show you that's easy to make with a lot of components you already have. Now, it looks like there's a lot of stuff here, but we are going to make at least three I think <laughs> I have to think about that so um, let's start out with this leather so um, let me just say for the first bracelet all you need is the leather and a way to attach a clasp to it so I got these I think from Aliexpress a long time ago came in a bag it probably had about a hundred of these pieces and let me show you here they are what they look like so let's open this up so they're hollow on the inside and they are there's a quite a big hole so you can fit a really nice size jump ring through there and they just happen to be the exact same size as this leather so you can see I just have to when you cut your leather, I use my clippers. You can use your scissors as well. But just remember, it pinches the leather a bit. So you just got to shape it back into a circle. And look at how amazing that fits. So we are going to glue these on. That's going to be our first bracelet. That's how easy it is. We're just going to add jump ring with a lobster claw and another jump ring on the other side. And Bob's your uncle. Now, um, let's just quickly take a look at some of the others so this what we're going to do is we're going to make it so it's double like this and then the clasp now i have a super small wrist this is what you call a super small wrist um, and the the jump ring is going to go here but what we're going to do for the other two bracelets is we're going to shorten the leather so that it kind of looks like this and on this section here we are going to add beads and little dangles so it can be as simple as you want or as elaborate as you want so to do that those bracelets I'm using some Swarovski crystals I will probably do a dangle with that and this beautiful tiara cast silver ohm symbol this is a two-sided these, I love these. I buy them all the time in all the different metals. These are uh, silver plated. I have gold plated ones and there's copper plated ones. They're stunning and they just really make your bracelet pop. I'm going to use these beautiful beads that I got from Raven's Journey. They are so gorgeous. And then we're going to use one of these flat coin beads. We're going to make a dangle with that as well and put it on. Then the other one, we're going to go with kind of a C theme. So we're going to use these antique drops and this, and we'll figure out if we need some crystals along with that. You're also going to need some type of jump ring. So I am using open drunk jump rings as well as closed jump rings. These ones here I got on AliExpress. They're lovely. So I'm going to use this one along with some lobster claws. I have two sizes. I have a bigger one here and then a smaller one. I just find the bigger ones easier to maneuver for your hands and also will fit better with this. So it kind of the size is in my opinion determined by the size of the jump ring. So that's going to be your connector. So let's get to it and I'll show you how to do this. So simple. Hopefully you have some of these items at home. You're going to need some glue to glue your caps onto your, your end caps onto your leather. I'm using E6000 and you should let this cure for 24 hours before you wear it or pull on it and stuff like that. I will say I did not believe that this would work in my first bracelet probably a year ago or more. I did one kind of like this where it was a double bracelet with some connectors on it and unbelievable how strong it is. I You can't get it out. 
So if you make a mistake and you want to pull it off, you're going to have to cut it off. There's no way it's coming apart. So that's good to know. Um, and you're going to need some, um, some stringing wire. You can actually use beading thread if you want for that process of stringing on your beads. Um, depends. You can use um, silk thread and do knotted in between your beads. That part is kind of up to you, but I'm going to use this. And actually, that reminds me, I need some crimp beads or tubes. I think I will use a crimp. I'm going to pull out my crimp beads in case. I love using the crimp tubes. And actually, I think they are in a big container. Let me just grab that here. Yeah, there's my crimp tubes. These are silver plated. So, yeah, let's try that. So you're going to need your crimping tool for this. Let's get that out here. Um, I have a few tools. So it's like, okay, there it is. There it is. Ta-da. So I have a ruler too. So my wrist is six and three quarters. Um, I just eyeballed this and measured it around my wrist twice. And it's slightly loose. And this comes around to about there on my wrist. So with the clasp, it should be fine. So for the first one, this is actually 13 centimeters. Yeah, 13 centimeters of leather. So let's pull these off. So we'll do this one first. So let's just move these over to the side. Maybe get that there. Move this back a bit. Okay, so we're going to need those. Let's grab that. And we'll need some jump rings to attach the two to that. So let's grab our glue. I'm going to put some glue. Usually I just dab inside, but I'll tell you these have it. They're folded in. So you can see there's a little gap there. So if you just stick the glue in there, you're going to get a whole bunch of glue all over the place. So you might want to put some on a little piece. I have my stick it notepad. So then when I'm done with this, I can just toss it. Squeeze on there that's plenty you put your cap back on and I have a toothpick I'm gonna apply it with look at that a little piece I already got on my so the other thing about this is you want to make sure that it's um, flush uh, I mean that's a little bumpy that's fine but the reason I say that like if you have it on an angle this the this area is quite short so you want to make sure you have, you can dip your thing, your leather in. But I think I'm just going to grab some of this. Oh, that's a little much. And see if I can. So that's still even a lot for this small area. Okay, and because this is quite snug, so I'm just you can see the glue is coming out. Sorry, <laughs> like which way to go? You can see the glue is coming out. We'll um we'll take that out with the uh, toothpick. Let me grab a fresh toothpick for that one because your jump rings are gonna go in there, so you don't want them. There, that's good. So let's do the other side. So let me see. This should be enough. To, oh. Grab my tube. Put 
put that in and you can see it's still coming out but we'll just pull it out because I want the leather to go as far in as possible so you can see that's let's grab another toothpick I <laughs> gotta grab a few and put them in next to me sorry about that that's my light it's like a bar so it's easily gets knocked in the way there we go and I'm pulling it through because pulling it back through is just going to get the glue stuck back in there so let me see if I can use that one later okay so now we're ready to go let's get some I'm going to use seven millimeter jump rings to attach to there actually I might get another one of these guys and attach it thinking 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 and I might double up on the jump ring so that it's not directly attached to but I think I might go with a smaller no, that one's too small I think let me see if I have some other sizes. I tend to use a lot of silver jump rings, so I go through them a lot faster. So if we do that and then like this, I feel like we need something in between there. I wonder if we should put a closed jump ring, a smaller one. I do have some smaller ones. So let's take a look here. So we have this one, it's a bit thinner, so maybe something like that. And then we want to do the same on the other side but so just remember every time you add a jump ring like that it's going to add some distance so you have to incorporate that into the size of your bracelet um do you know what i think i'm going to do is put smaller so let me grab a few oh they're falling all over the place instead of these seven we're going to use some smaller ones, five mil ones, to connect them. I didn't know if that'll be enough on that. Yeah, it should be. Let's try that. Okay, let's get some tools. I didn't mention this earlier, but you will need some tools to open your jump rings. So let's let's see right off the bat if this is gonna fit our connection. It's a wee bit tight. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. By the time we close it, it, it won't give you the, oh, wait a minute. Let's get this little thin one on there. Okay, let's put this on here. I was trying to be smart and use my tool to put it on. It's not working. Okay, let's turn this a bit. I just want to make sure I haven't moved my leather too much. Okay, now let's close this. See if we can maneuver this to close it. I need to get another pair of these chain nose pliers. I wasn't thinking when I ordered them. They're great because they get into really narrow spots. that the other tools don't. OK, 
and try a different tool. My flat might get in there better. Then we can grab it here. Perfect. That's that's good. It's still like it's not um, it's not the best, but okay. So let's get the let's unhook this here. Let's see how this goes on. So let's open this one. That, that on there. Like that. And then like this. There we go. Nice and snug. So there is your connection. Okay, so now we need to add this jump ring is going to be connecting the lobster claw and then we're going to have a connection so let's get the small jump rings again yeah if i had six millimeter it would work better the fives are really small I'm on to this here. These are 18 gauge as well, so they're super strong. So I gotta make sure that's on all the way. Get that on there like that. And hook this one on. Like that. See if we have enough space to close that. There. Like that. Now we're going to hook on the closure, which is the big round closed jump ring. So let's open this next little guy. And you can use whatever you have at hand. You don't have to do it this way. Let's have a hole. Make sure I have a hold of this one. This guy. And nice. So that is this side here. And then this side here. And you close it up like that. So the bracelet actually me goes like this so it's a double wrap bracelet like that let me open this up a little so you can see like that and we'll put a little I think we'll put the dangle here away from the part that you're going to be hanging on to to open and close so let's get this guy we can add this one with just a jump ring so let's do that that'll make it super simple so this is the seven millimeter jump ring let's open 
that up, pop that on, and put that onto here, and close it up. show you what it looks like on see how easy it is to attach I don't know you might need help to um, put this on so let me grab grab my lobster claw like that and then grab this guy I'm so close. <laughs> I definitely think I need help. <laughs> this is why I like the magnetic class. It's really hard to do this on your own. Especially if you have issues with dexterity on your hands. I'm going to try one more time and then we'll leave it let's see if I pop that under there to get it stay in place get the sky open look at that so even at that this is really um it's loose which is fine because yeah let's go up here which is fine because you know, like most people, you probably don't like it really tight on your wrist. But I think because I've added this distance, and when I tested this, this was right up to the other side. So I probably could have taken at least an inch off of the leather. But we'll just leave it at that. So that is lovely. And that's just super simple. So I am going to take this off while we're doing stuff. I find that things get caught in my bracelets. And we want to let this cure as well. So I will like double check to make sure I haven't pulled it out any. Let me see how that... No, it's fine. It is. You can tell it's not. This one's glued like it's uh, set okay so let's work on the next one so like I said this one I cut 13 inches so now what I want to do is I want to create a bracelet that has strung beads to this section so instead of putting the closure on either side of your bracelet you're gonna let me just get that there on either side of the, the leather what you're going to do is you're going to attach it all to one side. You're going to put a strand of beads on this side. So when you do that, you want to make sure you shorten your leather. Uh, let's not put that in there. To the distance. And I think I calculated to take three inches off. But you know what? I think I'm going to take four. Because I feel like this is going to that one's like a little too big so the other thing with this now that you have a bunch of jump rings on there you can always add an extender chain because you have a lobster claw so if you want to you know if you made this for yourself and it's you have a small wrist but then you want to give it to somebody with a bigger wrist just add an extender chain to that section here and then you're ready to go with your lobster claw so I was never into extender chains before and now I just love it because it just opens things up completely. So let's work with this one. So I think what I'd like to do, let's start by cutting the leather. So I have this on, I was just showing you guys. So let's measure out 10 centimeters. Um, so I said take three off. So let's do nine centimeters so that 
I know for sure. I can always add beads to it to give the length. So you see how this um, kind of pinches it on an oval? Just, you know, roll it between your fingers to get it the way you want it. So this, this seems short now, but look, that's how tiny my wrist is. So then that's going to go across. So let me see, just to double check where that will take me. So it does seem a little short. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, we can do another one, do the next one differently. So you can also get this to change the way it rolls. And, and soften it a bit. You can either use your hands or you can use a tool like this. And you just put it in there and you roll it and you see it. Let's turn it the other way and roll it. So you see it's starting to change, soften it. Okay, so let's get these guys going. So these are the ones I want to put on. I probably won't need all of these. So let's take our ruler. So I thought maybe, let me measure from side to side. It's about two and a half inches. So let's measure out two and a half inches of these beads. Actually, probably two inches is enough because you're going to have the loops on the side of your wire. And we're going to put spacers in there. So it actually only needs four beads because these beads are long. So we're going to do that. We're going to put some of these guys in there. And that's all we need for that part of it. So let's grab a piece of wire so you don't need a very long piece of wire and you can attach like loop your wire around a jump ring or you can actually put it onto this end cap so I think what we'll do is we'll put it on a jump ring and that way if we want to change it out to something else or make this longer, we can. But once we add it to that, then we have to, we can still take it off, but it's just a little easier. So let's use a, what is this? Where did this one come from? This is a closed one. It must have come from my closed jump ring bin. So let's grab some small ones. I don't think we need any big ones for this. And since we're doing this, let's make sure that it's closed all the way. This one's a bit open. We are going to open it back up to attach it. There. A little bit more. And that's just so the wire doesn't pop off. We can actually add it to this and then, but no, we want to glue this separate now that I think of it with the glue coming through the hole. So that one's fine. And that one looks pretty good too. Yep, it should be fine. So I'm going to start by doing the first one. So let me get my crimp tube. And you could actually attach it with a um, wire guard as well. So, let me see. These are kind of big. I don't know. Ah, that should be fine. I have too many um, supplies that it's like I'm trying to decide what to use <laughs> becomes a chore. So put your crimp tube on first. Let's open this up. 
So put your crimp tube on your wire first and then your jump ring. You're going to fold your wire over and put it through the crimp tube. I'm going to pull it this way like that. And you can make it as big or small as you want. I think I'm going to pull it right to about there. Okay. Let me move these guys. Okay. So I am holding on to the wires so that they are flat side by side and that they don't cross over because when I go to crimp it, it's important that they are separate and not crossed over. So I am, this tool has three slots. The two slots here, this one's the regular one, this is a micro one, and then this is the one that uses to fold it over. So we're going to use the bigger one. That. It's hard to see because the jump ring's in the way, but that folds it into like a taco shape. Let me see if I can show you there, like that. So you can see the wires are kind of close. Let me, you can sometimes, yeah, nudge them to the side and then use your end piece to fold that so you're going to flip it 90 degrees so that it folds onto itself like that that is awesome lovely and then we'll cut this little tail sticking out some people put the tail inside their beads you can do that too this crimp is not going anywhere and neither is the wire so I don't worry about it it's not it's not going to come apart so now let's get our beads on I think we're going to do some spacers actually you know what I'm going to see if I have any little silver balls and beads and put that first um let me see if I have any actual like real silver ones first okay. before I add Ooh, look at these these are pretty these are not real silver these are um, hematite actually so we're going to grab two of them I just find it's kind of nice to put that little finishing touch on the end of your wire so like this, let's grab this one, there, I thought that's pretty, I'm so pretty, I'm so excited, and then our first bead, oh yeah, that's lovely, you could put one of these silver beads in between each, but I think I'm going to try one and then we'll see what it looks like, but some people put two or more than two and it looks really cool. Oh, I don't know. That's pretty nice, but let's try the second one. It just gives it a little more texture. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's pretty. That's really nice. Oh. Okay, that's so much fun. So put two daisy spacers, a bead, two daisy spacers. These are so tiny, they're hard to grab a hold of sometimes. And a bead, and this is what we have. Look at that. And then the other silver bead. I don't know where it went. Can't see it. Oh, there it is. It's hiding. So I'm looking at this strand and it's starting to look big. So I'm going to test it on my wrist. Let's 
So I think what we'll do is we'll, when we get it all together, we'll um, decide whether we want to um, shorten the leather. So, okay, so now we basically do the same on the other side as we get our jump ring and our, sorry, our crimp tube, our jump ring, and we're going to bring this, turn it over and pass it through the crimp tube. And then you're going to bring your crimp tube all the way down to your beads. Now, you want to make sure that you have some bend in your wire. Um, I don't want it to stick out like this. And if I were to pull it just really tight down, that's what would happen. So I want it kind of loose. So, And if you want it even looser where the beads move around a bit, then leave more space. But in the meantime, let's see what we have here. I'll hang on to this. That looks pretty good, actually. Let me... I think I want some space for my beads to move a bit. So let's, I'm going to attempt to keep my wires separated. And I'm going to put that into the last slot and wire split. So let me just adjust that. It keeps turning. Let me See if I can do it that way and squeeze there. Let's get this to the side, then go to the last one. Let me, um, I'm going to go with the, let me flip it, it works. okay so actually it did, I'm going to go to the middle one and squeeze to get, yeah I do need to flip it this way, to make sure that it's got a hold of both wires, Then 90 degrees and turn. That did not work at all. I do find sometimes the um, crimp tubes are wonky. So let's pull it out and get a new crimp tube. Oh, our bead came off. Let's put that back on. And that's with the, you know, quote, expensive crimp tubes. So, um, you know, just be aware that it's not going to be perfect every time. So let's grab another one. I kind of knew when it didn't flatten the way it was supposed to into the little taco that it was going to be an issue but I'm always <laughs> just I'm always hopeful I just lost my uh, jump ring there's four there's five. Oh, I want to make sure it's closed actually that should be fine because we're going to open that to attach it. Let's grab this. And let's get this guy down here. So the wire is kind of kinked and bent a little. Don't worry. Let me see if I pull it through the bead. I don't know if it'll go through the bead. Oh, it did. It just might make it easier to pull it through the bead like that. Pull it down, pull everything down, and then get that little and just 
to remember we want some space there. So hang on to that. Let's see if we can get this in here. Right there. That looks like it worked. It should have a little grooves there. Perfect. Turn it 90 degrees and then go through your first slot and that should roll it over and fold it onto itself. Perfect. Okay, let's get in here and cut this off. Oh, this is going to look lovely. Look at that. Okay, so one side is going to hook on to one of these guys. So let's actually, let me see what I have here. So I think this is too short. Let me check my other bracelets. So this one's a little better. See. So I don't particularly like them that loose, but let me see. So that one is like that. So we don't need it much more. Um, just trying to think once we add our clasp on one side. What did we measure this one? Nine? Let's cut another piece that will do ten and then we can deal with the size at that point. So let's ten. And we'll just clean this up a bit. Okay. I think we should put our caps on. There's the other one. So let's get some more glue here. much looks like I am always worried so I probably put too much in that one actually didn't come out that much so we're gonna leave that one so that was a little better this should probably do it for this one And two. There's a teeny bit coming through here. Okay. Now we want to attach this to that, but we need a clasp on one side. Um, let's put one of these there. 
going to use the big jump ring to attach that and then we can attach that one directly. Okay, so let's get these guys on. You can see it just went through the glue. <laughs> okay, so that's what we have there. Nice. Then we can attach this piece on. that up like that okay I'm gonna open this up a little so you can see everything that's going on so now this side we need a clasp and we need a closure so we need to put this attach that so whether we attach it like this one where we put two jump rings on either two smaller jump rings. I think it could fit directly onto that, so let's try that. Find, trying to find the opening. Okay. That one there. Be opened more. Those jump rings are thicker. I don't like opening my jump rings that much. I find it distorts them. But that's what happens when you're working with teeny tiny ones. They don't fit on things. Oh, that's good perfect lovely lovely and you could cover your crimp tube with a um, crimp cover we'll, we'll wait and see I these crimp tubes are really nice so I don't mind so much they look kind of nice so so let's attach and we're going to basically do the same thing we did here we're going to add one of these tiny ones and two of these guys and a lobster claw. So start, we'll do the complicated one first. Like that. When I say complicated, it's just a little more difficult because we got to open this quite a bit here into there. And then add this wee guy one. Let's see if we can get this closed. I am shocked. Maybe the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you can always turn this there so now you can't even see the opening so now let's open this guy put your lobster claw and your closed jump ring and close that up Yeah, perfect. 
with it. Okay, so this is what this is going to look like. We're going to add some dangles to this to finish it off. I should have tested this ahead of time. I do find that sometimes you get them and they will not open easily. You kind of have to play with them a bit. And that, that's going to be amazing. Again, I look at this and I think this looks so teeny tiny. Oh. But that's my wrist. Okay, so let's put some dangles. So the dangle that I wanted to put is this here. And I was going to put the um, ohm symbol. But I think we'll just put this one for now. And you know what? I think we should put some of those silver balls with this. I have, you know what? There's some that are stuck together. Maybe I'll... Nah, I'll just put one. I was going to say I'll put two, but... So we need some... Um, some head pins. So I'm going to try this one. I don't know the quality of these head pins. They may break, so we'll see. Just put that through there. And like that. Um... I'm going to try a wrap on this, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> could be could be a mistake. But, so let's grab it like that and fold that over. Oh, these are super soft, so they may not hold up if they're that soft. Let's grab them around those pliers, and depending on the loop size you want, I want just a small size, so I'm just going to put it there. Then fold your wire over, then loosen your tool and turn it 90 degrees and then fold it over again. And you could actually use your hands for this, but let me grab my chain nose and use that to wrap it and it's nice and tight. There. Lovely. And just straighten it out a bit. We're going to clip this piece of wire off. Right there. Cover it so it doesn't get in your eyes. And we want to try and tuck. There's a little, let me see if I can get that piece. A little piece in there. Don't want it sticking out. Just squeeze it gently. Turn. Squeeze and turn. Straighten that out. And there's your dangle to go on your bracelet. So I put the dangle on the side that doesn't have the lobster claw because you don't want it getting in your way of trying to open and close the lobster claw so we're going to hook it onto there so we'll just take one of these i think i use a smaller one for this try the four Open that, put your dangle on, and you may have to adjust where your dangle is attached to your jump ring on like either side of the jump ring, and I'll tell you why, because when you wear it, you want it to dangle down, you don't want it on the, say, top side. So there, 
that dangles down. But if you were to attach it to that side, and you're wearing it this way, now you can just flip your bracelet when you go to wear it. But because it's attached on either side, it doesn't go all the way around the ring. So, but that, that turned out beautiful. Oh, so that's our second one. I think um, we should do a third. Let me uh, just get this one to show you. There's the two. Let's put those aside. So let's um, look at this red one here. I think we're going to use four beads on the these drops. So let me just get in there without hurting my beads. There's four right there. These aside. So I'm trying to think. Let me get rid of that jump ring. So we have that. We need some of these tubes. I'm trying to think if we do a seven inch bracelet. Let's do another. I think the initial, the second one we cut 10 centimeters. So let's do that again. I'm not ready to give these away. <laughs> Can you tell? I'll just add uh, extender chains if I end up giving them away. So cut 10 centimeters. That. And this one's a bit mashed up here. And I think we'll glue these right now so that they're set. And actually, let me look at this red one to make sure they are okay. Let's get our little gluey thingy. Our glue station, that's it. Okay. Some more glue. There. I kind of knew once I started adding glue that I was going to have to take some out. So let's just do that. There. Okay, so we're done with that. So we'll set this aside while we get this one together. So grab a piece of wire. And we need some crimp. We should try the crimp beads this time. I think we'll use this one. There's one. 
And I'll tell you why. I use crimp beads and I flatten them and I like the way it looks. So let's we need some little five millimeters. Guys. And see if I can find one that's pretty closed. Yep. So crimp a bead. Like that. And then your jump ring. I don't know, I think this crimp tube is too small for this wire. No. And I'm gonna make sure that's not crossed over and bring that down. Bring it down a little more. I think I'm going to move it back. I don't think it needs to be that high up. There. Okay. So for this one, because it's a crimp bead, you don't need your crimping tool. I'm going to use my flat nose pliers and I'm going to flatten this. Um, let's see how that works. So, I, like I said, I like the way that looks, but I honestly, I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like it's secure. You can, let me show you. You can kind of see through the wire doesn't seem to be moving. Let me just uh, reinforce it a bit and then. We'll leave it. Seems to be working. So you see what I mean? I kind of like that look. Some people might not like that. but And I think I will leave a bit of a tail inside the beads just so that it's not sticking out on that edge. So let's get some... Uh, I'm going to do the same with the silver balls. Although there's gold finish on this you could use gold finishings but all my stuff is silver so we'll stick with the silver I don't have any of the um, the caps for the leather in gold that are like this and that are that size so I have to stick with it like that so let's grab one of these guys and make sure it's on both wires. Let's go through here. It's a wee bit tight on those. Oh, it's very tight. Well, that's good. I can clip it now. It's not going anywhere. Good to know. Now, here's the thing with these. They have a narrow part and a larger part. So however you connect these depends on you. So you might want to go all one way or you might want to go two one way and two the other. I think I might do that. So let's put the bottom part so that it makes it look like it's an arrow pointing to the middle. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it. So I am going to cut this wire now. Actually, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to cut the wire to about there so it'll, it'll sit in the middle of the bead. So let's get this one back on. And make sure it's on that wire. There, perfect. Oh, I could have gone even more. Let me cut this a little more there perfect that's pretty wow these beads look really nice with that you know what I think I'm gonna skip the daisy spacers and just put these beads and I have some bigger beads like this so I might put a bigger one in the middle so 
So I'm going to keep this in the same direction like that. Now I'm going to put a bigger one in the middle. And then these ones will position in the opposite direction like that. Let's get the bigger one somewhere in here in my goodie tray. Let me see if this is the one. Two more, not two yet, two more of the teeny tiny ones. These are the ones I was saying were stuck together. There, that worked. Used my fingernail to break it apart. There. That's long compared to what we were starting with. So we need our crimp bead and our closed jump ring. We're going to wrap it around and go through the crimp bead. I'm going to bring it down and see if I can get it through those guys. bring it up a bit it's easier to um, get that wire in let's see if I can pull that out some more just remember it was tight going through that little one so then let's see if we can get it through. Aha, look at it. Grab a hold of that and then pull this part here like that. Remember, you want some give in these guys. So now let's pull this down. So we don't want it that long. And so you want to grab hold of two beads when you're doing that because if you grab hold of the top one, it will just bring it forward. So that looks good right there. So let's get the flat nose. And mash that down. That looks awesome. And let's cut this. There we go. Okay, so we are ready to construct our closure. Let me bring this out a bit. So we want to attach this together with a link there. So let's get a small jump ring. there like that get this jump ring on and we'll close this up that. make sure that's closed yep then we'll open this one Attach this guy. Like 
There. Put this on. Now we are going to build up this side here. Actually, we might as well let's put our closed jump ring on this side. We need a big one that we'll use for the lobster claw to attach to. Does that be big enough? Yep. And that one's done. So that side's done. Let's get this guy. See where the opening is. Oh, this is the closed one. I don't know why my I may have moved my chair, so I'm kind of off to the side. I apologize for that. Okay, let's get this one on. Oh, you know, I needed to put my um, clothes jump ring on this. Let me open this. I thought it was going on pretty easy. <laughs> I was like, that was easier than before. Let me get it on this side. So it's out of the way. There, I like that. and close there <laughs> that's better okay one of these I went to grab that closed jump ring again I'm obsessed open let's put our lobster claw on there and then this guy. And close that up nice and tight. So this is now ready to go. We're going to add a dangle to this. Although this one's already ready to go, so it's more like a charm. So that's how that one looks. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so we're going to put it on the non- functioning side right here. So just put that there. So this is the one I want to add to that. It kind of somewhat matches. I think we're just going to put a um, jumper. And that is that. I think the other reason why these are a little difficult to work with is they're 18 gauge. So for such a small size, which is the five millimeter, the it's thick, so it makes it harder to put things on. And so we're gonna attach this to the closed jump ring. And that is that. So let's move these things aside so we can see the different bracelets that we've completed. So we actually made three today. So let me, let me see if I can bend this a little bit more so that it'll stay there. Um, 
So that's that's the one. Let me open, close this up a bit. So that's that one there. So we have that one. And then this one. And then this one. Flip that over. And that one. Let me do it this way. There we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's a little easier. Um, definitely, if you start it with the first one, it doesn't get much easier than that. And then if you want to add some, you have some beads that you're hoarding, because I know if you're like me, you have beads that you don't want to use. Here's a good way. You're only using a couple, <laughs> but you're, you have them everywhere you go. So there you go. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.